In medieval times, people who were redheads, or gingers as we usually say. The entire public began to feel uneasy around them. It is in our human nature to stay away from the things that don't make sense to us. So imagine, you go back a few hundred years ago, surrounded by either blondes or brunettes, and then suddenly, you come across a ginger with pale skin and green eyes. You wouldn't be the only one to wish to cast away those people. Our history is filled with many wars, discrimination, and often for all the wrong reasons. For instance, did you know that most of the witches burnt at Salem were totally innocent? Another fun fact, many towns considered the same gingers as some type of witches or even werewolves in some cases. Welcome to our channel, History Unfolded. In today's video, we are going to take a trip down memory lane and find out why gingers are still considered unlucky to this day. So let's go back to the Egyptians, God forbid, a ginger was born and soon the baby was being used as a cautionary tale. Even the Greeks considered red hats to be unlucky, and unfortunately, many of them were buried to their gods as a way to stay safe from any kind of curse. Could you imagine anything of that sort happening in today's age? Gingers have experienced all kinds of bad treatment and discrimination. Ancient Greeks called them vampires, and the Romans used gingers as means of slavery. We owe every redhead a sincere apology. But first, let's see how this so-called curse even started. Red hair is possible because of a recessive gene. And that gene is so rare that it only exists in 2% of the world's population. But still, rumors are going around that gingers are going extinct. Some geneticists predicted that gingers would be gone by 2100. This drove us to learn more about their history. If you could believe it, even some Neanderthals were completely fully ginger. So not only the viewers of this video are interested in gingers, but so is the scientific community. DNA belonging to someone 50,000 years ago revealed that gingers have always been a huge part of our history. Although their strict treatment began to die down with time, a mummy aged over 3,800 years from the Bronze Age was found and she was known as the Beauty of Lulan because of her red-colored looks. Now if some cultures were treating sepia-colored people as goddesses, why are there still so many taunts going around? So for that, my friend, we go back to the start of the video. Humans are uncomfortable with rare things. But not everyone likes to know the history behind the discrimination because we'd much rather stick with stereotypes. A girl with a redhead is considered temperamental and fiery. On the other hand, a mere redhead is considered unserious and clownish. But if you care about our history, then you should enlighten yourself about some of these facts. There has been some evidence that Judas Iscariot, who was one of Jesus Christ's apostles, had red hair. Now, we're all familiar with the story of Judas betraying Jesus Christ, so there could be a possibility that all this started war against gingers. In the time of Christ, no one wanted to trust gingers anymore, and all this traveled further forward into becoming part of our history. See, what we meant about cultures considering gingers unlucky. Now where did this myth about gingers being violent start? Many parts of Europe were filled with redheads, and an Indo-European-speaking tribe called Tarassians were habited all over Greek, Turkey, Romania. But when fellow migrated tribes became in contact with these tribes, they were not met with any kindness. Therefore, people started to associate gingers with a violent streak. Now let's talk about how every part of our world played some role in the discrimination against gingers. We gave you a glimpse into the culture of ancient Egyptians. Well, gingers were used as human sacrifices to please their god Osiris. This was simply because they thought that their god's arch nemesis was a supposed redhead. Anyways, let's talk about something we all know, the Vikings. There has been historical evidence that the Vikings were to bring redhead's gene to Scotland. Now, we're no one to talk about the history of gingers when even the Greek Aristotle weighed in on the matter. When Aristotle wrote about the appearances of fishermen from the north and how they didn't seem to be bothered by the cold. Unfortunately, there weren't many resources available to research the lives of redheads. 
but it was enough to tell us that they were all treated differently from the start. Now the Vikings came a thousand years later, but their descriptions and opinions of gingers were not that positive. But maybe we can't forget the witch hunts and sacrifices from thousands of years ago. What do we have to say about today's world? Back in 2008, an Australian zoo launched an advertisement for their orantigans, and they mentioned how redheads would be allowed free of pass. This led to a huge conflict, as people began comparing gingers to apes and how they were going extinct. But even after facing a huge backlash, the Australian government did not learn its lesson. That's because in 2010, all these derogatory marketing campaigns began to increase in numbers. Even the Australian government used redheads as a butt of a joke and used it in road safety signs. It was mentioned that if you drive without clear thinking, it might lead to gingers mating and creating offspring with red hair. To think that we had left all this discrimination behind, it only started to spread. In 2009, a college Facebook group named Kick at Ginger Day resulted in physical assault against redheads. Up until recently, France made some changes to stop calling all gingers Poil du Judas, which translated to Hair of Judas. We all know how Christians feel about Judas betraying Jesus Christ, but it isn't fair to take it out on some pale, harmless gingers. Now as we move up to Germany, let's not talk about their history with Jews, but did you know they're associated most Jews with gingers? But even before the World War, there was a special tribe in medieval Germany. These people were called the Red Jews and had infiltrated the Caucasus Mountains. Many people believed that this tribe believed in the Antichrist and was conspiring against Christianity. However, we later found out that this was simply a rumor that spread when the Khazars, a tribe from Turkey, migrated towards these areas. Moving on to the United Kingdom, now with a red-haired prince, you'd expect some mercy, but there is none. According to some researchers, the UK is where gingers are treated with the most disrespect. Unfortunately, we might never have the time to get into UK's aggressive discrimination against gingers. It has been a result of oppression, wars, bigotry, and imperialism dating back to before we were even born. For that, guess, you'll have to keep coming back for other videos. Now the UK came up with the anti-bullying alliance that brought some gingers some justice. Now any sort of bullying or taunting against gingers will be considered a hate crime. But many people believe that racists who want to perform acts of oppression on actual minorities have started using gingers as targets. In the last decade alone, there have been many physical assaults and even stabbing against gingers. Although the UK has many famous redheads, they have also reported being bullied because of their hair color. Did you know that in 2015, gingers were charged with terrorism? All because he wanted to murder King Charles and Prince William to make the red-headed Prince Harry his true king. Now over in the US, Thanks to the animated series South Park depicted what it's like to be discriminated against as a ginger. The public used it for all the wrong reasons and conspired many plots for a real-life kick a ginger day. We can explain or even try to understand all the discrimination, but another weird fact came to us. One of the world's biggest sperm banks reported that they had the largest number of donations from red-headed men and there is no reason behind this fact. We can all sit and ponder. So if you have learned anything, it is time to learn about some common stereotypes that are still going around about redheads. But there is not just one type of stereotype about redheads. First, there are assumptions about their personalities and sexualities and even their moods. Years of stereotyping can be demeaning and even used to justify discrimination. That's why you can see many people complaining about red-headed females and their temperaments. You see a redhead walking down the street, you either assume they're Irish or think they take part in Satanism. If you are working with a redhead, you might keep your distance and think their short temper will be unleashed on you. But scientific researchers say that since gingers have a rare gene in pale skin, their skin absorbs way less vitamin D than any of us. This can make it hard or even impossible for gingers to tan. Another reason why gingers are different from the rest of us is because their brains produce larger amounts of adrenaline. This can explain why some gingers you know are happy-go-lucky 
or quick to go into a fight-or-flight mood. As if the above stereotypes weren't enough, there are more, and there aren't just about their personalities. Many people are under the notion that male or female redheads can be highly sexually promiscuous in nature. But we can never know for sure if that's true. However, that is evidence that most people usually tend to go for gingers as sexual partners because their rare hair color makes them more attracted. So the next time you see a ginger, try not to use any derogatory terms and ask them about their plan to take down Christ. It is just a simple gene at the end of the day, so it doesn't make sense to create such fuzz about it. Now that we have unfolded the history of redheads, it looks like any stereotype or trend doesn't just appear out of thin air. All these things predate history, and we are here to uncover them all. If you had any random or peculiar thought, let us know in the comments below this video, and we'll sure get back to you with all the research.